Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and I just wanted to do a one year later update review of my Polygon Cisco D6 full suspension mountain bike. Now, there's a new model out there. This is a 2020 model, and I've pretty much been beating the crap out of it for a full year. So I just wanted to go over, you know, what I've done to it, some of the upgrades I've made, some of the problems I've had, and my overall thoughts on how the bike is holding up, and you know, how it's treated me over the last year. I've been doing a lot of riding the past couple months. I got about 200 miles in, in the past like month and a half or so. And um, I've really put it through its paces in some really rocky conditions, some like roller coaster trail conditions, some hill climbing and things like that. So I've definitely gotten a lot of uh, experience on the bike now and I can talk in more detail about some of those things. For starters, I'm still loving the bike. I'm having an absolute blast riding the bike and since I switched the tires over to tubeless, it was definitely much easier to ride because I was able to lower the pressure a little bit which helped absorb the roots and rocks way better. I'm actually currently running 21 pounds in the front and rear right now, and that seems to work pretty well for me. I'm weighing about 210 pounds as far as my weight goes, so 210, and I have them at, like I said, 21 pounds and 21 pounds front and rear, and they really seem to work awesome at that pressure. I did have them a little bit lower. I tried them at about 18 pounds one day, but I felt like the tires would, you know, there was just too much wiggle in the tire, um, so I lost a little bit of handling confidence. And when I put it back up to 21, it just felt like I was dialed in on the bike again. So for me, that seems to be a really good place to be. I also noticed the front shocks. I initially put too much pressure in the shocks. So I lowered the pressure in the front shocks. I'm now running about 90 PSI in the front shocks. And I will check the rear shock and let you know when I'm running there. I don't know off the top of my head, but I'll check that in a minute and let you know. But again, 90 in the front and that really smoothed out the ride. Um, it put me more in the mid range of the fork and it, it's a, just a more active suspension. It feels like when I lowered the pressure on the front, made a huge difference when hitting roots and things like that. It wasn't bouncing as much and was much more supple. So make sure you check the pressure when it comes to the shock forks based on your weight and stuff. So as far as riding goes, definitely getting better, learning better body position. I've been watching a lot of guys on YouTube, the tutorials with all the different positions and you know how to, how to pedal more efficiently, get over obstacles and things like that. And I'm learning a lot, definitely improving for sure. And really enjoying, you know, just the whole getting better at something. I'm always a fan of that. And every time I go out there, I get in better shape, it feels great. And uh, especially when you, you could make it up a hill climb that you couldn't make the previous time, uh, it's very rewarding. And one of the reasons why I love mountain biking so much, you know, a lot of split second decision making when you're riding in the trails. And also, you know, of course, skill required um, getting up obstacles, over obstacles, things like that, dealing with loose terrain, muddy stuff, you know, wet roots and rocks, all sorts of different challenges you face when mountain biking. So it's really coming, coming a long way and I'm definitely starting to get back to my youth where I was pretty darn good at riding. So still a little bit afraid of uh, big jumps and things like that. I just don't want to get hurt. Uh, getting hurt really sucks when you're over 40, as you probably know, if you're over 40 like me, you get an injury and it takes months to get better. <laughs> it sucks instead of getting better in like a week, you know? All right, so just going over a couple other things here. The gears are working really good, although I'm finding this largest 41 tooth, I believe it's a 41 tooth gear there. Uh, it's just not quite big enough. It's 42 teeth. So this biggest gear is a 42 tooth gear. 
and when climbing hills I find I could use an easier gear. Uh, I wish I had an easier gear. Some of the other bikes like the Cisco T8 for example and the newer D6, I think the 21 D6 might have a different gear but I know the the T8 um, has like a 51 or a 52 tooth so it's a much bigger rear sprocket easiest gear basically is larger and it'll make it easier for you to climb at slower speeds as it is now like i could i, I could only go so slow when i'm climbing because of this gear that's like my limitation so i noticed some of the other guys i ride with have uh, larger cassettes and they're able to pedal much faster going up a hill at slow speed where i'm like really it takes a lot of leg strength with this particular gear setup but it's not that often that that happens. It's on like mid-level climbs when you're starting to get tired and you just want an easier gear. Like you want to go slower and you can't. That's really the only time I've had that. Regular climbs, it's not an issue at all. It's just like that medium grade stuff when your legs start burning and you want to slow down a little. You, you can't always slow down enough depending on you know your leg strength and things like that. So I did notice that with the gears. Let's see what else here. Also, when I'm pedaling along and downshifting, Sometimes my gear, it's a 10 speed on the rear, so you got 10 gears. So the last couple of gears, like let's say 7, 8, 9, and 10, when I'm in like gear 7 and I try to go to 8, for example, sometimes it won't shift down. And I played with the cable tension and I, I adjusted the gears in and out and um, it got better. But every once in a while still from like 8 to 9 or something, it won't shift. And then I'll, I'll hit it again and then it'll skip two gears. It'll go like 8, 9, 10 and I'll have to go back up to 9. So that is one problem I've been having with these gears. Probably user error, like I said, you know, I, I've adjusted the gear tension or the cable tension and stuff, which is supposed to address that. Um, my maximum in and outs are right where they're supposed to be. So everything's good there. It's just a matter of the cable tension, I guess. Um, the derailleur and everything is straight. There's nothing bent there. So, but that is one issue I, I was having with the gears, just to let you know. But overall, they definitely work really well, I would say. Oh, uh, one problem I did have was this rear cassette here. This thing actually came came loose. So if you take the axle out, you can pull the back wheel off and this cassette actually unscrews. There's like a big screw that uh, goes in there that holds it. So I had to borrow one from a friend of mine to tighten it up because my cassette was like chattering. It was making this chattering sound and it turns out it just loosened up a little bit. So I was after, you know, probably 200 miles of hard riding. So make sure you check that if you hear some kind of like clattering. Um, that's what it sounded like, like just metal, like k -k 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 like type sound. Um, make sure you check your rear cassette. As far as the brakes go, they work absolutely fantastic. I've had no problems with the brakes at all. Several people I've seen that review this bike have experience with better bikes, but I don't have that experience yet. And they say that the brakes are a little bit weak, but from my perspective, coming from a really horrible GT with the old, like, you know, pad style, brakes these are so awesome that i have absolutely no complaints whatsoever with the brakes more than enough power i never felt like i needed more brake or anything but obviously you know the better brakes are even better the four piston calipers are going to give you more stopping power but like i said i haven't had any issue where i felt like i didn't have enough brakes so i didn't have any brake fade i did have some long downhill runs and i didn't have any problems with brake fade although i could see that being a problem if you went to like a ski slope or something and they were like you know miles downhill i could see the brakes probably getting hot and maybe getting some brake fade there but i haven't had any issues with brake fade in any of my riding as of yet that's pretty much that now i just wanted to go over a couple of upgrades that i made with this bike so the first thing i got wanted to do was go tubeless with the tires now if you're not aware what tubeless is you have tubes inside these tires by default and it's very easy for the tubes to get pinched and go flat so what you can do is you can actually put this tape on they make this special tape that you put on the inside of the rim and you wrap the tape around there's videos on youtube to show you how to do this it's actually really easy so you just you take the old tires off you take the tubes off you, you clean the rim then you put this tape on and you have to actually change the valves here then you put the tire back on you then put this slime stuff in there and then you blow the the tire back up and because there's no tube in there you can actually run lower pressure and you're saving weight um, without that tube in there so you're gonna your bike's gonna be lighter as well so there's quite a few advantages to going tubeless the lower pressure is probably the biggest and the weight savings is also huge but honestly just upgrading the tires made a huge difference as well the tires that came on this bike stock 
were pretty horrible compared to these Maxxis tires, I gotta say. So let me go over some of the uh, other upgrades here. So for the tires, what I ended up getting was the Maxxis Minion DHF for the front tire, dual compound tubeless tire. For the rear, I got the DHR2 dual compound EXO tubeless tire. So they were both about $65 when I bought them, 65 each for the tires. Not exactly cheap, but it's really good rubber, very puncture resistant. And I gotta say the performance is absolutely phenomenal on these tires. Really good, no complaints at all. Uh, they grip in the corners, in mud, in hard pack, in loose. So really happy with the tires, highly recommend those tires. A lot of good options out there these days, but I had really good luck with those tires. So I highly recommend them. Now for grips, I ended up getting these Ergon grips. They're called GA3 Ergonomic Lock-On Grips. And as you can see here, they have like a, the way that the hand comes out, it gives you more like surface area to put your hands on. And it takes, it, it actually helps so your wrist doesn't hurt as much and forearm pump and things like that. It gives you more surface area on the grips and they're nice and soft. I highly recommend them. They work great. They were actually only $30, so they were fairly reasonable in price. Now pedals, the stock pedals um, worked pretty good at first, but then these nubs here started to wear on the stock pedals, making it a little bit slippery. I upgraded the pedals to Crank Brothers Stamp 1s, and they're plastic pedals, and they go for about $45, and they have much more aggressive spikes here, so my 510 shoes stick on here really well, and I highly recommend these pedals. The better pedals that cost more money actually have a more concave design, and they are aluminum but they're a lot more money and I didn't really want to spend that much. So I went with these and so far they're working great. Now for the seat, the seat that came with this bike was pretty awful and my butt was definitely hurting riding. So I ended up going with the highly recommended Ergon SM Pro comfort seat. Now this seat was definitely expensive. It was $110 that might put you over your budget, but I got to say, the seat is super comfortable and after riding it a few times, I was really happy with it and now I have no problems at all. I also got those shorts that have like the padding and the, like the crotch area so you wear that underneath your riding shorts and that helps a lot. Highly recommend getting those. It'll save your butt, believe me. And once you get used to riding, you kind of, you might not need them anymore but at first it's definitely a little rough. So I also got this uh, fender here, this 50-50 fender. It uh, goes for about 10 bucks and this helps keep mud out of your face. Highly recommend getting this. I got mud in my eyes a couple of times. As soon as I got this fender, I never had that problem again. Super cheap. It's very easy to install with zip ties. So definitely get yourself one of those. I also got a bottle cage here. It's a pro bike tool bottle cage. It works pretty good. I usually use the uh, backpack though. I got this water bottle backpack thing here and this works really good. This, this actually went for about $35. Now inside this, it's got this pocket here. And what I got is a pump. I just got the Air Blaster 350 from Bell. That's the pump there. And all these, I'll link all this stuff below guys so you know what I got. Pretty much got the best bang for the buck stuff. I got a multi-tool here, little multi-tool. And I also got this tire plug kit. This was actually expensive. I bought this at the bike store. It was like 60 bucks from the bike store, but you can probably get it much cheaper online and it's great for just plugging your tire if uh, you get a, a puncture while you're out there on the trail. And that's pretty much what I carry with me as long, along with the bladder. And it's got this bladder in there. You fill up with water. I usually put ice and stuff in there. That's the backpack. It's a pretty good deal. Uh, you kind of have to have those essential items. Now the helmet I went with, I ended up upgrading to this gyro. It's the gyro radix. MIPS men's dirt cycling helmet went for about 95 bucks and it's a really nice helmet it's a super nice design here it's got this wheel on the back to adjust it to make it fit perfect it absolutely fits perfect for me so really happy with that I also got some gloves I'll link those gloves below they're only 18 bucks they have like little padding on the palms and the fingers are out so your fingers are out and that helped a lot as well and I have the 510 shoes I told you about before they go for about $90 now, I just wanted to go over a couple of the tools that I ended up getting, like I said, because I did have the rear cassette come loose and I put pedals on and stuff. So the first thing I got is this bike stand. And the bike stand is pretty awesome. It goes for about 120 bucks. It's made by Bike Hand 
and it supports up to 55 pounds and it really does the job well it makes it super easy to work on the bike when you're working on it for example when i took the tires off to do the tubeless switch out and everything and all sorts of stuff like that it, it really works and makes it so easy when you're fine tuning the gears and the brakes and stuff i mean the bike stand just makes life so much easier i highly recommend getting one i also ended up getting this tire pressure gauge here this thing went for about $20 and it's uh, just super easy to check your tire pressure. You just put it on and it has a little bleeder so you can just be like Ch -ch -ch, and you can get it exactly where you want. 20 bucks, it was definitely worth getting. It wasn't that expensive. I just got a, a cheap air pump here to fill it up from, it was like 30 bucks. Now this is the shock pump right here. And the shock pump actually, this actually went for $30 as well. And you need that to put the pressure in your shock. So you're gonna have to get one of those. The other thing I got was this thing. This actually goes on the bike, so you can put it on the bike rack and it stretches because the angle of this tube is so slack. This actually goes on up here like this. And then when you go to put it on the bike rack on your car, it, the bike actually sits level. So this is like an accessory that I needed for the bike rack so my bike was hanging level because as it was, by default, the front tire was really low, kind of like it is right now. The front tire is really low and the back tire is really high. So this straightens that out so it sits and the wheels are correct on the back of your car. It's very important. Otherwise the front wheel might hit if you go through a dip or something like that. And this thing, how much did this go for? This thing was about $30, kind of expensive, but it was definitely worth it. Now, the, another thing I just recently got was this tool kit. This went for like 80 bucks and it has a bunch of tools uh, in there. Cause like I said, I needed the cassette tool. The cassette came loose, but if I open this up here, you can see what we're looking at but this is what the toolkit comes with and again this was kind of expensive it was 85 dollars but they're really high quality tools everything is made from uh, decent steel it was a compromise between getting the really good stuff and the really cheap stuff so i went with this and it looks like it has pretty much everything i would ever need for all the basic repairs so uh, i went with that and these down here are the cassette tools and that's really one of the main things i needed was that and then this cassette holder so I can take it off and tighten it and stuff if, if I wanted. Also, this guy here will help with the cranks if I need to take the cranks off and stuff. So I went ahead and uh, got that. And the only other thing I got was like a phone holder for my uh, handlebar. And that thing just holds my phone. So uh, when I'm using like Trail Forks and, and uh, Strava, those are the two apps that I use for mountain biking. It'll track where you mountain bike and stuff and you can share with your friends. It's pretty cool. Ch be sure to check it out. I'll put my username up so you can see it if you want to follow me and uh, we can become friends on Strava. It's a pretty cool app and uh, you can share your routes and things like that on, on other apps like Trail Forks. It's pretty cool, um, the stuff they have out there so you can find mountain bike parks nearby. I found so many parks I didn't even know existed that were by me. So I highly recommend checking out Trail Forks and Strava for that type of stuff. I'm gonna go out there on the trail and try to get you some really good footage and show you what this thing can do now that I have a little more experience with it. All right, so what we're looking at here on Google Maps is where the pump track is located. It's called Pump Track Adventures. You can see it right here. And here is the address if you need it. So I'm gonna go there quick. All right, so here's like the little baby pump track course. And this is a lot of fun just to get used to it because it is kind of a weird motion. Uh, you're, I don't really know what I'm doing here, but you're supposed to suck up the bumps and kind of accelerate out of them by pumping. So the better you do, the harder it is physically and the faster you go. So it's kind of like sucking up the whoops if you're skiing or snowboarding okay. or something. How's it going? So you gotta use your whole body. Um, just another skill and it's fun because it seems like it's helping tremendously with uh, trying to navigate berms. Not very good at berms on the trail. And also learning how to jump a little better. I'm not really uh, too keen on taking getting huge air, but uh, it is fun to jump, especially when you land smoothly on the downhill and stuff. So anyways, uh, this is a pump track if you've never seen one before. Super, super fun. And the bike handled it really well. I put the tires up to 40 pounds of pressure, just so you're aware. You wanna run harder pressure on pavement like this. And uh, you can lock the suspension out as well. I tried locking out the rear shock and just had the front shock working and that seemed to work pretty good. I was able to go a little faster with that setup. A lot of fun. And then I'm going to pan up, let me just zoom out the map here, and I'm going to switch and we're going to go to this park over here. Now I'm going to switch over to Trail Forks to show you that because this is what the actual park looks like. So you can see here I'm in the same spot as I, as I am on the Google Maps map 
except now we're looking at it with trail forks. You can see pump tracks like right here in reference to this awesome park. Now for this park, where I what I did was I drove up and I parked over here by this uh, reservoir here. And then I ended up taking up this skyline path and that brings you all the way up to the top right here. And then at that point I took this road around and then there's another parking lot up here and this is where I was looking out. You could see the view um, that I was giving you from this spot right here. And then right over here is where Cosmic Charlie is. I'll click that and it highlights and gives you the trail information. So it's like a three quarter mile trail and it goes down the mountain and it pops you back out on the bottom where that bridge is. I'm not looking forward to this climb, but the downhill of Cosmic Charlie is totally worth it, as you will see in a minute. That's where we're gonna come out in a minute. Got the bridge there. Definitely starting to get winded. <laughs> Well, I made it to the top. Now, well, gotta go around this turn here, and that'll bring us to the top of Cosmic. Check out this view. It's a pretty good view of Port Jervis. Just gonna unlock my shock there from the climb. All right, ready to go.
Sorry, man. Oh, uh, you're all good. Another killer trail um, that you got to try if you go to Port Jervis is this trail over here. It's called Painted Apron. Painted Apron is phenomenal. It says it's a black trail on Trail Forks, but it's really not that difficult. But it's a lot of fun. It's got a lot of uh, cool turns and banks and berms and stuff like that. So be sure to check out Painted Apron as well. All right, just to give you my final thoughts on the Polygon D6. It's a great bike, especially for the money. I paid $1,200 for mine, but again, it's a 2020 model. This is a year, you know, a year later review of the D6. I just wanted to really show you guys how well it holds up and, you know, how I've kind of grown a little bit with the bike over the course of the year. So two thumbs up for the Polygon D6. For the money, it's a phenomenal deal in my opinion. $1,200 is what I paid for the D6. It's currently going for, the 2021 model is currently going for $1,400, but they did upgrade the rear cassette to a 51 tooth. So it goes from 11 to 51, as opposed to 11 to 46. So that 51 tooth is gonna make a big difference when it comes to the harder climbs. I can't really notice much else in the specs that might have changed from 20 to 21. So it's possible they changed other things. I just didn't notice. I'm like looking at the specs. It seems like everything's pretty much the same. You know, they did raise the price a little bit, but it's still a very fair price in my opinion. And uh, I highly recommend this bike for somebody who's just getting into mountain biking that wants a full frame suspension. And especially for somebody 40 plus, the rear suspension is so forgiving on your back. When you're just riding along, the rear suspension is bouncing a little bit and it does cost you some efficiency. There's no doubt about it, a hard tail is more efficient, but lower back pain when you get older also is a factor. So that rear suspension, I'm telling you, when I lock the suspension out, you can feel how much stiffer it is. And after like 10 minutes of climbing, you could almost feel like you're, you know, you want that suspension back. Um, especially on a trail. If you forget, if you leave it locked out on a trail, you immediately know you don't have the rear suspension um, opened up and you're gonna want that. So for somebody like me, somebody that's over 40, you know, the full suspension is just the way to go in my opinion that it helps out a lot with the dampening. I mean, even when you're pedaling, like I said, you lose a little bit of efficiency, but I'm not looking for the best lap times, the best track times, I'm not racing. I'm not doing any of that stuff. I'm just looking to have fun, not get hurt. And as far as budgets go, Polygon is one of the best bikes out there for the money, hands down. It really is a good performer. So as you saw previously, I did have a couple of issues with it, but not a big deal at the end of the day. The rear cassette loosened up a little bit. That was easy to tighten. And uh, that was the one major issue that I, I had with it, I would say. That's pretty much it. Anything else I talked to earlier in the video when I was going over it, um, part by part a little bit more specific but again super happy with the polygon now if I were to critique the d6 a little bit I would say the front suspension and rear suspension could probably be better it's hard to tell without riding a better bike but I have just like quickly got on a couple of my friends bikes just to feel what the shocks felt like and stuff and the better suspension does definitely feel better you know, but that costs more money. If you're looking at like the T-Series Polygon, 
or the N series polygons. Um, the suspension is much beefier. The frame appears to be a little bit beefier on those bikes as well. I'm not exactly sure how much different the frame is, but I know they just came out with the T8, the new T series, and they updated the frame with a different geometry and stuff like that. So I'm looking into that as well. The T-Series would be better for those heavy duty riders that are really looking to hammer the trails a little bit harder and you want a more supple suspension when it comes to sucking up roots and rocks. Food for thought when it comes to which model you might want. All right, so, you know, that's pretty much the end of this review, guys. And I gotta say, my goal was to get back into mountain biking and this bike definitely has done that. It brought me back into mountain biking. I'm having a lot of fun, hanging out with a lot of my friends, mountain biking all the time, multiple times a week I'm going now. And it's great exercise, great fun, and the skill set just keeps improving. The whole pump track thing is like a new phenomenon, I, you know, new to me anyway. And that's a lot of fun. It's just something else to do. I really hope you got what you were looking for. Please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos. I have another mountain bike review coming soon. Uh, just a little teaser there. Ooh, look what the FedEx guy just dropped off. Oh, yeah. Guys, new bike just showed up, super excited, super excited. So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for that. And if you guys have any questions, by all means, please ask away, I'll try my best. I'm not a super expert when it comes to mountain bikes. I obviously am more of an expert when it comes to cameras and lenses and things like that. But I am pretty knowledgeable with the mountain bikes and uh, so I could probably help with a lot of like basic stuff. But you know, more technical stuff like that, um, you're better off checking out some of the other channels, of course. Those guys are black belts with mountain bikes and they've been doing it for 20 years. So, you know, if you have like specific questions um, that are really technical, you'd be better off asking one of those guys. But all the basic stuff, I'm definitely uh, fairly knowledgeable. So be sure to ask below if you have any questions. Be sure to uh, hook up with me if you want. If you live in the area, I live in like the New York area. If you're, if you're around and you want to hook up and do some mountain biking or something, reach out below in the comments area and maybe we can make something happen. I'd love to. It's so much fun and it's, it's great meeting new like-minded people. So... All right, guys, I will catch up with you next time. Please have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there, and uh, let's hit those trails, all right?